Welcome to Team Building Cultures, the podcast designed to deliver tools and tips for improving team communication, collaboration, and fostering a culture where teams thrive. Now, here's your host, Beverly Hathorne, owner of Strategic HR Consultants. Hello, and thank you so much for joining another episode of Team Building Cultures. I'm very excited today to be speaking with Ms. Carrie Ann Powell. Carrie Ann is a global business strategist, speaker, and champion of small and medium sized businesses. Carrie Ann's varied experience of over 20 years as a Washington, D.C. attorney, lobbyist, and fundraiser positions her as an authority of what it takes to strategically succeed while confronting difficult obstacles. It's wonderful. Carrie Ann, I'm so excited to speak with you today, and I'm so thankful that you took some time out your busy schedule to join us. Beverly, what a joy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I am excited about our conversation. Yeah, yeah. Tell us just a little bit about uh, being a attorney and lobbyist in Washington, D.C. What was that like? That well, sounds I, exciting. Well, that was. That was quite exciting. Um, you know, I, I right out of law school, um, got a, a position at a public interest law firm. And while I was doing that, I got a chance to sort of, you know, it was really exciting because I, you know, one of the first cases I worked on, you know, as a junior attorney. So I didn't do, you know, I wasn't standing in front of the Supreme Court, but was, you know, it was a case that we um, argued before the Supreme Court and I was able to be in, in the gallery while we were arguing it. So, you know, it was, it's really, it was a great season of my life. I enjoyed the law very much. And, um, and it was focused, my, my career was always focused on constitutional law. Then when I went into being a lobbyist, I focused primarily on, you know, various different things, uh, but, uh, you know, free trade, various different things around those topics. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, um, it was an exciting time. And then once I finished with that, not just I finished, I actually, there was an opportunity to um, help to uh, be a fundraiser for the Martin Luther King Memorial. They hired me to sort of lead that effort. And so I did that for a couple of years. I was like, oh, well, I'll do that. I'm going to get back into the law. But after we, you know, raised the hundred and twenty million dollars, built the memorial, I was like, it's been a little long, and I went straight into uh, my business. So it's it's been a journey, and I've really enjoyed all the different opportunities that I've had during the career. But one of the things I really do love is, uh, you know, helping business owners and leaders in corporate being able to to thrive in in business. Okay, well, that's wonderful. And I definitely can see how you would be successful, particularly at the, the fundraising, because you're clearly very um, uh, a very bubbly and interesting personality, you know. So I can see how you could talk people into giving you money. Giving you some money. <laughs> for your purpose. Yes, yes, very good. So, and, oh, and a lobby. Yeah, a lobbyist would require the same personality. You've got to convince people to see things your way, you know, so. That is very true. That is very true. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. That is really awesome. So today you're going to talk to us about some powerful strategies to ensure a leader's ability to take control when their team is in chaos. Mm -hmm. You're going to talk to us about secrets to integrating strategies into repeatable systems and processes. And I'm really um, excited to hear the powerful strategies that leaders can use to motivate high-performing teams to step up. So yeah, let's just kind of start there. What are some of the, yeah, Mm -hmm. what are some of the strategies that leaders can use to, um, motivate and drive and get behind their teams and and get them to, you know, move towards the goals. Well, you know, Beverly, one of the things that I often say is, you know, there's sort of eight components that I, that I often look at as a part of our methodology when we're working with uh, leaders and organizations. And, you know, at the core of it is, you know, leadership, we call inspired leadership. That's one component. And the other component is rockstar teams. And I like to look at sort of inspired leadership and rock star teams as being really one coin. They're just two different sides of that one coin. And so if you are feeling like your team isn't performing up to snuff, up to par, and you know that you have um, hired a good team, you know, they're self-motivators, you know, they're qualified and all that good stuff, then I would first say, and no one likes to hear this, but I would first say, take a look at kind of how you're leading. 
Because if you're not leading very well, it's very difficult to get a, a good team um, to, to, to work at peak performance. Now, if for some reason you're looking at your team and you're thinking, well, you know what, actually, I didn't hire very well. I, you know, I hired individuals that maybe um, are not self-motivated. They, you know, they, they, they aren't necessarily looking to, to do something that's bigger than themselves. Then that's a different discussion and it's worth exploring your team a bit further to sort of figure out how you can either, um, you know, transition folks out and get, you know, a different uh, team in. Or maybe it's possible to be able to grow your team into the kind of team you want them to be. But some of those fundamental things around self-motivation, self-determination, wanting to work for uh, causes that are higher than oneself, thats those are more internal things that you really can't necessarily uh, get into someone who doesn't already have it. So I, I would say first, assess your own leadership style. If you feel that you did a good job in hiring, because most people, when they hire, they feel like they did a good job, right? <laughs> Although I have worked with companies where I was working with a, with um, an executive of a company and she just, you know, we were going back and she was like complaining about her team at that particular time. And I said, so tell me a little bit about like the team you had before. So we sort of did like an archaeological dig as to kind of, you know, okay, some of the team before that and the team before that, right? And all the different hires that you've made. And it turns out she realized, she's like, you know what? I actually am not hiring well. And the reason why was because she was actually taking on people who had been referred to her by people who she looked up to. So she didn't really feel comfortable saying no. And that was a pattern over her entire career where she would hire people that some of her mentors or people that were a little bit above her would say, hey, take a look at this candidate. And she would bring that person on board because she felt like she needed to. Yes. And then, you know, and, and it would always implode and she would never and she'd always feel like it was her. But then she began to realize, well, she began to think it was them. And then she realized it was her because she was hiring poorly. So that is one thing to assess. Are you doing something wrong in the way that you're hiring. But you also need to assess, are you leading well? So you can have the best, you know, you know, the best team possible. But if you find yourself not being able to lead, and look, leadership is one of those things, Beverly, is that we're not all, we don't come out of the womb learning, lead, like being leaders or knowing how to lead. And I think that's one thing that people feel a little guilty about, right? Just because you've been in a company long enough or you're really good at um, performing a particular task or you're good at, you know, tech, tech, a technical particular role. So you get promoted all the way up and up and up. And the next thing you know, you're leading people. It doesn't mean that you actually have the leadership skills, but no one wants to say, I don't have those skills. So they don't want to go and sort of, you know, learn how to be a leader, reading any leadership books, going to leadership conferences, finding ways to tackle, and even having someone in your inner circle who's able to say, See, when how you did that right there, that that particular behavior is not is not a good trait of leadership. You a better way could have been this way, you know, those kinds of things, because people feel a little uncomfortable, record, you know, sort of acknowledging their own, you know, in, you know, non non strong suits. So I do think that, you know, first assessing your own leadership and I would say first assess how you're leading yourself. So your own personal life. You know, the things that you are trying to convince yourself or influence yourself to do, you know, there's a big uh, uh, TED uh, graduation speech from that from that colonel on YouTube that's been around for a bit, right? And he says, you know, first make your bed, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, it's, it may not just be your bed. It might be, you know, the things in your life that you want to have happen in your life, but you're unable to lead yourself to do. Assess that, start putting in behaviors that will get you to be a better leader in your life. Then you start looking at how you're leading your team. Are you putting the right people in the right spaces? Are you being um, um, authentic in the way that you're communicating? Are you not? Are you um, being consistent in the things that you're permitting in the or in your business or in your organization? 
or in your department. So like if you're letting Susie do this over here, but you're not letting John do that, you know, you don't want to create toxicity and those kinds of things. And then are you leading the organization well? Do you have a strategic goal for your department, for your business? Are you projecting that? So when I say leadership, it's it's more than just, oh yeah, I can manage, right? Management is not leadership. Yeah, you can always look at someone's tasks and make sure they're doing it. So how do you get, so after you sort of assess that, assess whether or not you hired well, assess whether or not you're leading well, then you can start looking and saying, okay, how do I get folks to be peak performers? So you're just trying to, at first you just want to get folks to be like doing what they need to do. But then how do you get your team to be peak performers? Well, you know, those you want to first assess why they're not peak performers, because you're assuming that they can be peak performers. You're assuming that you can be a peak leader. So if the, if you guys aren't operating at peak, then the question is, what is that? And some of the reasons that usually pop up for not getting to peak would be one, there's not a very clear strategy in place, a really clear um, strategic objective. Where are we going? What, what's true north for us? Not like what's the task we're doing this week or the tactic we're trying to implement today or you know the goal, but what is what, what are we about? And then being able to make sure you can vision cast that all the time, making sure that you're giving people the communication they need to be able to know what that is. That alone will get people moving towards peak. Then you want to make sure that you have a strong strategy to get you to peak. And then you want to make sure that there are things that people are doing on a day to day, you yourself and your team that is that's 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 quantifiable, that is that is actually being, you know, I always call this exceptional execution. And because you know what you don't realize is, and I think I'm rambling a bit here, but People don't realize that 67% of strategies fail because of poor execution. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a, you know, if you have a strong vision and everyone's on board with that, then you really do want to begin to make sure that the strategy you've put in place is moving and that, you know, and give people the, the space to then bring their brilliance. So you want to start, you want to think about managing systems and processes as opposed to managing people. Yes. Yes. We manage things. We lead people. Right. You know, exactly. so, yeah. 100%. And I totally, I'm, I'm in alignment with you when you talk about, uh, is the strategy clear? Because performance and exceptional performance can actually be a relative term. You know, when someone thinks, you know, I'm knocking this out of the park, <laughs> You yeah. know, but actually they're barely getting over the goal line, you know, yes. and that may be because the strategy and, and the goal is not clear. Not so clear. not only do you need to make that clear, but you need to reinforce that yes. and the communication for that, because if when you're communicating, if the message that I send is not received, it's just noise. So make sure that yes. that communication is clear and effective as in, you know, are you guys getting what I'm saying here, you mm -hmm. know, and maybe have them, you know, give them opportunities to understand where they fit in, you know, let yes. them know where they fit in, in the whole big scheme of things. Absolutely. You know, this, and what, what, what is their, you, you know, for. what is their day-to-day how do their day-to-day yeah. -day behaviors, tasks, actions affect the overall strategy? You know, right. I'm always fascinated by people saying, oh, you know, this could have been an email, those kind of like, I hate meetings kinds of things. I often feel that a part of that is because, you know, maybe the way that the meetings are being run isn't really that effective. And so, of course, uh -huh. people are like, well, why are we sitting here? There's also a, a whole concept around you know, so many people are disconnected from their day-to-day their -day behaviors, activities, and, and tasks are so disconnected from, you know, to the strategy that they themselves don't really see why they're even doing what they're mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's mm -hmm. really important to communicate that. And you talked, Beverly, about being clear, clear in communication. We have to acknowledge that people, okay, there's two things around communication. One, People need to hear something like 12 to 15 times 
for them to be able to get what it is you're communicating. And Mm -hmm. I, so that's one thing, because think about many times that you've seen an ad and seen an ad and seen an ad. And then it's like the 16th time you saw the ad, you're like, oh, they're selling the product that I need. Right. (laughs) So, you know, you, you, it's, it takes a long time, many different ways. You need to be communicating many times. Don't feel like you're beating a dead horse is what I'm saying. The second thing around communication is people receive information differently. Differently. That's right. So you may be like, you know, I, I do receive information auditorially. So if someone's um, speaking, I, I would actually be able to get that. I also do receive information visually. But um, if someone's writing it, I'm going to be less likely to kind of, I'm more of a skimmer. And if I am going to then go into detail to read it, if I have to spend time reading, because so I spent so many of so much of my life reading cases and briefs, then I'm going to go into detail. And I so I always associate reading more with um, detailed reading. And so if someone gives me the degree, I'm like, OK. In my mind, I'm thinking I have to put that aside to read it. Right. But some people I've got a good friend who. If you don't put it in writing for her, it hasn't really been communicated. Like you could have said it, Mm -hmm. she could have seen a picture of it, but until she actually got it in writing for her, it wasn't really communicated. So if you have a vision, then what I recommend is like, you know, put up pictures, um, put up graphs in the, in the, you know, break room. And if you guys are remote, find ways to get that information, put it in Slack, those kinds of things, continue to say it, right? have it written and, you know, have GIFs around it, have video, Mm -hmm. like every Mm -hmm. possible way you can communicate, do it. So it's one, communicate often, two, communicate in various different ways. Exactly. 100% because your team is comprised of lots of different personalities, lots of different learning styles, lots of different communication styles. So you've got to be able to address all of those in, in, in order yeah. to be effective. And I wanted to just briefly go back to one of the things you said about, you know, maybe look at your leadership. I, I, on occasion, well, I've always prided myself on not being a micromanager. You know, I'm like, no, I delegate, I trust my team, I give it to them and let them roll. I give them grace to fail forward. You know, I I always prided myself on on not being a micromanager. However, I continue to lead team after team in the same way. Well, I finally engaged the team that during a 360 review said I was a micromanager. (laughs) And you were like, what? My pearls. It's like, <laughs> what? I am the antithesis of a micromanager. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I was doing in leading authentically, being a servant leader, building relationships, building available, being available for them, they didn't need that. They were a highly skilled, um, experienced team. And I was leading them in the same fashion I had led my previous teams and I needed to adjust my leadership style with this team to be more transformational Mm -hmm. and less uh, transactional. I've never been authoritative. I've never been that type of leader, but uh, authoritarian, but um, I, you know, I, I needed to be more transformational, just be the visionary behind things. And, you know, instead of, you know, saying, yeah, do you need, how's that going? Did you get that done? Do you need any help with that? Do you have the resources you need? They were like, like, go away. (laughs) Don't worry. I can, I can complete a task. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I did not see that as micromanaging, but they did. So yeah. what a, what a, you know, for this goes back to sort of self-awareness, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have been able to see it unless someone told you, but mm-hmm. so many times people get a little bit defensive and they're like, well, what do you mean? But you were able to pause and say, oh, yeah, yeah it's because yeah. the style in which I do, and these people are a little different than the ones that I had. Right. And that, that, that had before. Self-awareness, and that is a trait of leadership mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I, yeah I had to adjust my style with them and I was so, like oh my fantastic. god 
I'm like, I I'm so it. sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, I love I will that. get on that right away, you know. I love so that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, your leadership that you might think is, you know, perfectly suited may not be suited for the team you have now. Yes. It may have worked in the past, it may have been great in the past. But if you're stuck and this team is not moving forward, you, you carry, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. look at your leadership. It might yes. not just always be the team. It might be yes. your style of leadership. So, and yeah, I, I really, I really believe with leadership. I mean, you know, I, I could talk a lot all about leadership because I think we have a mis there, we have a glut, like we have a, um, an absence of leadership in the world, I think, as a whole. Right. I mean, we have a lot of people who have titles and we have a lot of people who have um, have put themselves into positions of leadership or have been placed into positions of leadership. But the actual art of leading is something that is missing. And I, that's why I really believe it's first in order to be a good leader, one needs to be humble enough to recognize that they may not be, they may not have the skills to be able to lead exceptionally well at this point, but that they can learn those skills and be able to put them in place. I also think that leader, like nowadays, particularly with um, sort of the, 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 the boom of sort of the corporate leader being a particular celebrity style, you know, the Elon Musks and those kinds of people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We seem to think that what leadership is, is what we see out there, the charismatic, the, um, you know, the, the very much in your face kind of leader. But, you know, there's a, there was a study that was done by Jim Collins and he's, he's an author that I absolutely, he's a business author that I absolutely love and he's a researcher. And so he and his team did a, a great deal of leader um, research as to what makes um, co great companies last, yes? And one of the components they were looking at was leadership. And they found that truth be told, regardless of what your leadership style is, meaning your personality style and how you show up in the world, the components of leadership that, le that was able to connect with companies that whose CEOs were able to lead their companies into ways that lasted for long periods of time in the US, the, the, those components really were very different. They were actually leaders that were very less like the sort of charismatic, bombastic personality. They were actually the ones that were not like that. They were the ones that were, you would sort of, you know, this idea where they were uh, uh, more like orchestrating uh, a, a, an orchestra versus being mm -hmm. the leader mm -hmm. of, you know, mm -hmm. of this, the band, the band, you know, the, the, the band, um, what do they, you know, when you're in a band and the person who's the, the drum major, the drum major, Dr right? Right. Yes. So, yes. you know, it's a different, like, in, instead of it being a drum major person, it's someone who's championing uh, a group of very, already talented human beings. And they're sort right. of a little bit in the background. So that, you know, if, if, if you are someone who's trying to really hone their leadership skill and want to be inspired and really transformational. I would take a look at um, just Google Jim Collins leadership scale. He's a scale from, I think it's zero to five. Take a look at that because I do think that it really does help to help it, it. First of all, it keeps you, it keeps the leaders from falling into the trap where they feel like, well, I'm not really charismatic and I'm not, you know, you know, like a, an Elon Musk or whatever type of person. I keep saying his name because he's the one that everyone is looking at right now as considered a leader in corporate. But, you know, you don't often, but, but, but if you don't feel like you have a charismatic type personality, then I don't think you have to be worried about that. I think you first have to sort of take a look and see what's your personality style, then what's your leadership style, and then how are, how are the traits that um, Jim and his, his team kind of identified and see where you are with that and build upon those. Because I think that's mm. where you can begin to really become a good leader. That's that, that's very interesting. I, I will definitely take a look at that and I encourage my listeners uh, to do the same. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, chaos, you know, how leaders can 
um, manage chaos. I, I noticed that that was one of the the topics that um, we decided to uh, cover. Mm -hmm. So let's let's just talk about that a little bit. Give give me your thoughts on that. Well, you know, I, I think I think there's 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 symptoms of chaos in a business, and then there are the real reasons for chaos. Mm -hmm. So a, a symptom of chaos, there, there are a number of different symptoms of chaos that will show up in a business. One of which is if the leader feels like they're wearing too many hats and they don't feel they're comfortable stepping away from the business or their department or their team without feeling like things are going to implode, that's a symptom of chaos. It's a big, it's a big symptom of chaos. Yes. If you mm -hmm. feel like you are burning out yourself as a leader, then that's a symptom of chaos. If you feel as if, you know, whatever. So like in the business realm, if you own a business, for instance, if there is perpetual um, cash flow problems, that is a symptom of chaos. And if you are leading a, a, a division of your company or looking at the numbers, if the numbers aren't numbering, <laughs> the math ain't mathing, it's a symptom mm -hmm. of chaos. Another symptom of chaos is the inability to scale. If you own a business, if you are, if you've been in the business for a bit and it's just perpetually growing, but you can't scale, meaning you cannot, whatever the processes that keep your organization running and business running, if if the top line revenue is not growing faster than your expenses, then that's also a system of a, a symptom of chaos. And so when you start thinking about chaos, right, everyone thinks, oh, you know, we're not we're not hitting our goals, but chaos can show up in different ways. But even though those things are symptoms of chaos, and let me just tell you that these are some of the top four reasons why businesses fail, right? Cash mm. flow, not scaling, the, the leader can't, like is wearing too many hats, can't walk away, can't delegate, can't whatever, and the team is not performing well. Those top four are the number one reasons why businesses fail. So this is not an issue of, oh, it's just sort of a little chaotic. I'll handle it. No, if it's happening in your business and it's happening in your department, it's happening all the time. It's a problem. So the question is, well, then how do you fix them? And I think this is where I often say there's symptoms of chaos. And then there is the, the true culprits of chaos, because let's say I said to you, you, you came to me and, and you're like, well, you know, the reason why I, I I can't step away from the department is because clearly I need to, you know, get better team, right? So you may think that's the problem, okay? But we may look into it and realize that actually your team is fantastic, but the processes you have in your, in the, in your part, in your business or in your department are not processes that, first of all, and no one knows the process or there are no processes and everyone's doing things all willy-nilly on their mm -hmm. own way. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, mm -hmm. that's chaotic. I mean, if everyone right. is doing one thing their own way. Working in silos. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's chaotic. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's important to sometimes you as a, as a leader are unable to truly dis, to identify what the true culprit of the cha the chaos is because you may think it's one thing, but it might not be. It's kind of like, you know, if you went to the doctor and you're like, oh, I have a backache, right? And say you went to the doctor and said, I went, I, I have a backache. I think I know what the problem is. It's because, you know, you know, I, I was, I was um, playing with my grandchildren. I was lifting up my dog, whatever. And next thing you know, my back hurts. So that's the problem. I did something wrong with the back. But, you know, there are many other reasons why your back could be aching. It could be a kidney issue, right? You could be having mm -hmm. a, a, track, a urinary tract infection and it's showing up in the kidneys. It could be a situation where you had a bite, <laughs> right? There could have been a, a major like insect bite and it's like seeping into your back. It could be a number of reasons why your back could be hurting. But, it, you know, you went on WebMD and decided, oh, the reason why is because of this. And so now you're trying to fix that problem, right? I, I'll tell you one thing. I um, I was uh, training for a marathon a few years back and my calf muscle, um, I was running up a hill and it like something happened to it, complete, you know, pain. I was like, okay. But then it started like the pain started going away. So I was like, oh, you know, maybe I just need to go to a massage therapist. Sort of just like, you know, maybe it was like a knot, right? So I went to the massage therapist and, you know, they did what massage therapists do. 
they started massaging into the muscle mm-hmm. and like a whole hour of them digging deep and whatever. And it irritated me more. So I went to my doctor a few, you know, like a week later and I said, oh my God, my, you know, I'm training, blah, blah, blah. He's like, Carrie Ann, your muscle has been pulled and that whole massage thing worsened it. Because, worsened it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I think first you want to identify what the symptom of chaos is in the business. And then you can probably identify what the culprit is, but I really recommend bringing in people to help to identify what the true culprit is. And that's one of the things that I do with businesses, actually. I go in and sort of, we, we kind of assess a little bit of an audit of what is going on. And based on the components that we have decided are the eight components that are really important in, you know, running a business or being able to get a business to thrive. Right. And then mm-hmm. from we, when we do that, we assess and we sort of figure out, okay, this is where we are. And we kind of rank it based on fire, fire, fire to, okay, yellow, it's yellow. It's going to become fire soon, but, and then it's like, okay, this over here, it's a little problematic, but it's probably problematic based on the stage that you are, we can fix that over a long term. And then way, that way we can be able to now say, okay, here's the issue and let's start working on the big red ones first and we start moving down the line. So it can be anything is what I'm saying. A problem could be what you are experiencing as chaos could be a result. It could be the, 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 the symptom of something else And it's important to not just jump right in and say, that's the reason why that's happening in the business. And we're going to just jump in and fix it because you know what happens with that? First of all, you're wasting a ton of money. I cannot tell you how many times and resources and resources and Mm -hmm. energy, right? The whole energy of people. Okay. We're we're here to fix that problem. That's the problem we're going to fix. And then when you realize that it doesn't fix it demotivates the team because they're like, well, we've been working hard on fixing this problem. And then you realize the problem is not fixing and everyone's like, well, what's wrong? And then you demotivate the team and then you have all kinds of other problems. So I don't really recommend diving headfirst into chaos, but I think the first step is just to acknowledge that there's chaos because sometimes people don't want to acknowledge there's chaos because they're mm-hmm. like, well, no, everything is okay. Really? It's just the, it's, 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 it's like, you know, the, 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 the cost of doing business kind of thing. You know, this is what we do. No, no, no. There's some problems. Yeah. And then yeah. begin to sort of say, okay, how can we begin to figure out what is the true cause of the problem? And then let's start looking at how we're going to fix it and fix it. Just pick, pick one thing. There's, you're going to realize once you do a real in-depth look, you're going to realize there's a ton of problems, but mm-hmm. you want to first just sort of pick the, Pick the big red ones, the ones that are fire, fire. That if you know, if you don't, it's like triage. Yes, exactly. It's it's triage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you, once you begin that process, if you begin that process, it's actually probably better to get yourself a Carrie Ann Powell to come in and help you, a professional to come in and help you uh, determine what the problem is. But if you go about fixing it yourself, then you, you might find that if you hit the right, the right problem of the chaos that's causing the chaos, you might reduce other little smaller chaos down the line. Yes, you know, you, yes. that might it, take it's care trickle of some thing. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Reagan economics when he was talking about the trickle down. Yes. But that mm-hmm. does happen in, in business. If you, mm-hmm. if you do fix some things, some of the other things will trickle down. I can't tell you how many, um, I was, um, I was, uh, with a company and one of the, I didn't, the, the client didn't realize just how much she had lost a great deal of respect from her team that her team was not mm. happy it was a bit of a toxic situation, but she did not realize that somehow she had lost trust. Like they, she had lost their trust and because of something that had happened and she didn't realize it was a big deal. And then next thing, you know, so when, so when we went in, so she, she brought us in there because she was like, well, you know, the revenues were kind of stalling and there were some other things that were happening. So we're like, okay, let's, let's sort of see what was going on. And we finally realized that there was a whole team issue. And, you know, and, and, and unfortunately 
the, the the team issue was had been going on for way too long that there was going to need be a need to release some folks on the team and then you know work to to, to rehabilitate um some of the others and so it was a big a big task on her part it took a lot of um uh you know responsibility a lot of um acknowledging of 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 the situation once she began though implementing some of the techniques and strategies that we were talking about to try to get the team to move up and the leadership started doing that and she you know released some folks and everything the numbers started going up we had not even started working on the sales process or the inefficiencies that alone began to really help the numbers improve as well as the efficiency in the company. Now, of course, she mm-hmm. still had to go back and do a whole plan and we have to do look at that and how we're going to you know, increase their sales and that kind of thing. But just working on the team problem mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. trickled down to seeing those numbers go up. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I can definitely see how that would uh, be beneficial. So let's. this has been a great conversation on leadership and teams. Let's uh, talk, chat a little bit about uh, if you have something that you'd like to offer our listeners today. Yeah, you know, so if you, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're, to Beverly and I talk and you're like, oh my God, yes, we are having chaos in the business, but we have no idea what the real issue is, then I would offer you, I've got a PDF, PDF. It's a basically a download of my, of all the work that we've done in the business around identifying what are some of the real possible culprits that could be causing the chaos in your business. So the title of it is the eight true culprits causing chaos in your business. And if you feel like that could be helpful for you, then I would like to encourage you and invite you to download this it's a quick read. It gives you some techniques and strategies that you can use to implement your business right now. And it at least allows you the ability to identify what you think it could be. The website is nobusinesschaos.com, nobusinesschaos.com. And you can download it there. And I would just really encourage you to, you know, sometimes people feel a little bit of shame, Beverly, when they're like to identify, to, to admit to themselves that there is chaos uh-huh. happening in their uh-huh. department or in their business. And I just want to be able to, to say, you're not alone. Yes. This is not right. like, you know, you're not like, you know, the only leader that's having a problem with this, but leadership requires you to step up and to acknowledge it uh-huh. and then begin to uh-huh. address it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the eight true culprits, Causing Chaos, and you can get that free ebook at nobusinesschaos.com. Yes. And I also encourage my listeners to go and take a look at that. You might be surprised at what you might what you find. And I understand that you also host a monthly series um, for founders of small to medium-sized businesses. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, Beverly, we do this monthly thing. It's called the Founders Check-In, and we like to call it a monthly dose of business strategy. And it's basically a live teaching that we do. Um, we, we do it live on LinkedIn, but we also um, stream it to our to YouTube, Facebook, and yeah, YouTube and Facebook. And um, it's just really um, densely packed, you know, 45 minutes to an hour of just real good strategy that you can implement into your business today around particular topics. And so starting into the fall, we're actually going to start, you know, bringing on guests that are, you know, very on specific topics. Like, you know, this we this month we we did uh, how to, ex- how to ex- um, execute exceptionally. Month before that, we had an, a guest around AI and how to implement AI in, in your leadership and in your business. Um, we're going to be having some financial folks coming in uh, next fall. And so it's really, you know, important topics that each leader can be able to take away tactics from and implement them in their business, not just sort of a philosophical conversation. So it's, um, if, if you're interested in, in, um, and being a part of the invitation list, you know, you, you do have to register um, definitely. So we don't want to just to sort of be all, you know, accessible for everyone. We want people to be able to have ask questions, you know, and, and be able to have uh, some level of intimacy in, in the space. So um, if you are interested in learning more about that, you can send us an email, okay, at hello at trafalgarstrategies.co hello at trafalgarstrategies.co and uh, let us know, hey, put me on the invitation list and we'll be happy to do so so that the next time we have our next ones, we have them the first Thursday of every month. 
So, you know, um, we, we, we usually start sending out invitations about three weeks prior. Sounds awesome. Again, I, I will definitely uh, check in on that and I encourage my listeners to do so as well. Thank so you, this has been such wonderful information, Carrie Ann. It's been just really a jam-packed session with you. And there might be some people out there who want to connect with you. So how would they do that? Well, you can, um, you know, find me. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. So if you're on LinkedIn, send me a private message saying, how are you, Carrie Aaron? I was listening to, to Beverly's show. So for sure, um, I love people to just sort of connect in, in a more meaningful way. I'm a human being. So send me a message, connect with me on LinkedIn, and, and we can go that way. You can also send an email to Carol, hello at trafalgarstrategies.co, and we can definitely uh, get in touch if you'd like to, to, to schedule a conversation. I'll be happy to do that. If you just want to you know, be on our email list, Definitely, you can do that by going to our website at trafalgarstrategies.co and signing up for our email list. So there are many different ways that you connect with us. But, um, you know, and, and we're here and we're here to be able to help businesses thrive. We recognize that running a business and being a leader can sometimes feel like you're managing a chaotic tornado. <laughs> However, we really are here in order to be able to help you, uh, you help your business thrive smoothly in and not just in business but in life as well <laughs> oh wonderful I, and I can tell you what you just said like as a business owner sometimes it just gets crazy there's so much going on and you do everything except the one thing that you do you know the one thing that you do you know I'm, I'm an HR consultant but I'm often an accountant a marketer you know I'm, I mean do everything except yes. the one thing that I do. So yes. um, I'm going to take a look at the Jim Collins a leadership yes. scale, and yes. I'm definitely going to be checking in with you. I would love to be on that founders check in, uh, if nothing but a fly on the wall, just to hear what you guys talk about. <laughs> Because I think that there'll be some knowledge drop there, uh, <laughs> definitely um, strategies that I can utilize. So thank you so much, Carrie Ann. This has been a really great conversation. Well, really, really thank you for inviting me to be here. Yeah. I, I really, I, I love what you're doing. I love your show. So this has really been a joy. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Team Building Cultures. We hope we have delivered helpful and enlightening information to help you create your dream team. Join us next time.